Hello guys and welcome back into the gaming cub and I'm hoping everybody's well. We've got another pickups video for you. I know they're really coming thick and fast now since the last one. And seriously, it's because I've just had so many things to kind of to pick up and show you. This is a combination of a Facebook marketplace absolute win. Um, some bits of Margos, some um, their 3DS sale, which I picked up and a lot of those have gone into trade. Because I didn't have anything there, unfortunately, in my local stores I wanted. And um, car boot items, because the car boots are back on as well. So, yeah, I've done a couple of car boots now. So I really need to get a video out to show you what I've got. Before I go into that, I've got a couple of thank yous to do. Um, just before we go too far into the video and I forget. Um, the first thank you, you will have seen on the first couple of my videos I've done before this. And that is that I've got a new intro and actually a new banner for my channel as well. And that goes as a massive thank you to Pete Armour um, on a retro tip. Because he helped, well he made those for me to be honest. So he's helped me to improve upon what I already had. So massive, massive thanks to Pete. And I'm sorry I didn't thank you in the previous videos. It was just because they were already filmed beforehand. And um, I didn't want to edit anything, kind of just tag it on the end. So massive thank you to Pete for that. Um, and also, I've got a massive thank you to Dana as well, Danester. Um, because I've got a couple of items that he sent me in the post, um, which will show in the pickups as well. Um, before we get to the pickups though, I will address the game playing in the background we have bug on the sega saturn which is a really cute little platformer game at least i think it's classed as a platformer game it's kind of a 3d more environment rather than being platform but it is so of its time it's got that kind of zany humor to it and i think i picked this up from cx last year for about 12 quid um since then it has gone up i think at least it's at least about 20 quid now and a lot of the sega saturn games are slowly dwindling certainly the ones that are the lower value ones um in cex so don't buy them because i want to buy them <laughs> that's the story behind that but yeah if you have the means to play this one pick it up and give it a go so yeah we'll go on to the pickups and like i say the first ones i've got i've got to thank dana for because absolute lad i, I inquired about this he put some um, pictures on a discord group that we're all part of and um, I inquired about a couple and said, how much do you want for it? And he said, oh, we'll just do postage and I'll send them to me. And then he didn't even charge me any postage. And he put me a lollipop in as well. So absolute lad. Thank you very much for that, Dana. The lollipop has since been eaten because I wasn't going to keep that hanging around for the video. And I was hungry. But yeah, a couple of things he sent me. The first one being a PS1 Exploder version for this one so this is the cheap disc and exploder which came for the playstation one my camera will focus and um yeah this one allows you to input codes in before the game you have to use it on a playstation one because you put the codes in um you pop the lid you put the game disc in load the codes and away you go and i wanted this because i have final fantasy 6 on the playstation one and I'm completely lost and I'm against an enemy that I couldn't beat. And unfortunately with Final Fantasy, sometimes you get into fights and you can't go back. You can't really backtrack. You have to kind of just fight the fight and then carry on. So I did. Well, I got to that point about you know 10 years ago and haven't picked it up since. And I really wanted to kind of pick it up and play again. So I loaded this to allow me to get through that fight. And um, yeah, and I was completely lost anyway, so I had to start again <laughs> as it was. But it's a really cool thing to have, and it's quite cool to to input some cheats into that, which takes a little bit of the grind out of some of these like games. I know that's part of the fun for some people, but who's got time to grind for twelve hours to level up three levels on Final Fantasy? A lot of people. <laughs> but yeah, that's the that's the first item I've got. The second item, I'm really really happy with this. Thank you, mate. Because I remember playing this with a friend um, in the early days of um, moving out, uh, moving into my first kind of shared house. I had one friend, and we just sat on the PlayStation One with a bottle of whiskey and played one of these games. And I don't know if it was this one or the second one. I can't remember the cover, but absolutely loved it. It is a Namco game, and it is Air Combat that'll focus on it or ace combat i think it might be better known as these days but yeah dana said like um you can just have it because there's a the case is is knackered and what he meant by that is it's got this little crack up here which 
you can kind of see, but it doesn't really doesn't bother me. It's one of the original like early case versions, so they are quite hard to come by and replace. But it is complete disc and manual, and I think you know it's, it's really yeah the disc is really really nice condition. So I'm looking forward to be able to play in this one, and if I ever catch up with you, Dana, we'll have a drink and and play this should we ever get the opportunity to uh, um yeah that here's hoping anyway so yeah what have i got next so i have been to cex a couple of times since actually recording this video so some of the stuff i picked up from car boot sale weekend before last has already gone into cex so i will just try and kind of talk you through it and if i have the ability or sense i'll try and stick some photos in so you can actually see what the heck i'm talking about but yeah the um weekend before last was when the boot sales first started up and it was a bit strange because people really didn't know what to expect there was a few sellers there not as many there was probably the same amount of buyers which made it even more difficult and your usual kind of lizards going around buying everything um i suppose potentially myself included in that but i did manage to pick up a couple of items which i put in for trade so i got for the wii a game called hasbro family game night volume 2 which i picked up i think for a quid and um that went in for six pound a trade credit so lovely jubbly i'll have that all day long and i also picked up a copy of fifa um 19 on the xbox one which i picked up for i think it was I think at the time was like a two quid. I think I paid for it or quid, something like that. And I got eight quid credit. And yeah, that was a bit of a bust really. I kind of just wanted to go to see what to make of the car boots, what to kind of expect. And yeah, I wasn't really surprised by it. Because um, the way that they kind of set it up, the car boot sales, is that when you went in, they had you queuing up in rows of cars. Almost like when you're going onto a ferry, there's about six rows of cars um, and they'd let one row in at a time. So to kind of get you off the main road onto the field, but in kind of a separate field to get onto the main field to park. Um, so it basically delayed you parking by about 15 minutes. When you actually got into the boot sale itself, it's exactly the same. The only difference being that rather than having like stalls on both sides, you only had stalls on the one side, which, you know, I'm, I'm going to say I think was a bit silly. Um I completely get the social distancing thing and the measures they've tried to in implement for this, but it was a case that the people were going around buying stuff from the stalls. None of them had gloves, none of them had masks, nothing like that. And the only thing that they achieved by having one row of of trading stalls was basically you needed double the amount of space that it would normally take to incorporate all the people who are actually selling so it was just the same amount of stuff just spread out of double double the space so yeah it, it wasn't great the first week but i got a couple of things um i saw a couple of people i knew kind of going around buying stuff but yeah really not very much to speak of um also in that week because i think this is about the time that the sale started at Argos. I picked up a copy of New Style Fashion Boutique for, I think it was something like three quid, four quid, something like that at the time. And um, I got £10 trading credit from CEX for that. And yeah, I mean, it's got to be done for some of these things. I'm not in a comfortable enough position with kind of funds that i can just go and buy whatever game i want if i want to actually like get a game i am going to have to kind of save up for a while and be that from going to the car boot sales finding stuff trading it or buying stuff sometimes to trade which is just what a lot of people do and yeah i'm, I'm not doing it for any other reason than to kind of just fund my collection fund things that i want to buy and i want to play so yeah i've got some bits from there and yeah, I also traded in a couple of things I had from home. Oh, I also with that got a couple of uh, the Disney Magical World 2 as they were listed on Argos and then got given the Disney Magical World 1. Um, yeah, a lot of people are kind of up in arms over that being like, oh, see, Argos have robbed me out of like two quid trade credit or whatever. It's like, well, no, really not because you paid £2.49 for a game and you traded it in for about 12 quid. So I think actually you done pretty all right out of that and i'm not i'm not moaning whatsoever nobody's i think got to the point of kind of taking it back and saying like they're annoyed about it i think it's more kind of in jest a little bit 
and say like, oh, I got to rip me off. But actually, yeah, they got the order wrong, but I don't see anybody taking it back because ultimately you've got a bit of trade credit out of it. And to be fair, I really can't see CX shifting it at some of the prices they have there, especially when they get the massive influx of stuff uh, from Argos. So yeah, still talking about the stuff I've actually like traded in. Um, I traded in some of the games I got from that um, gazebo stall as well to get a bit of credit. And um, yeah, that kind of brings me on, if I can find it. Yeah, that kind of brings me on to my absolute stellar find from Facebook Marketplace, which... <laughs> I kind of hope that you've kind of seen the thumbnail and get a little bit of this if I've done it properly. But I saw a Facebook Marketplace seller dude and he put it on a local page and I think it's one of the groups I'm attached to so it came up. But he was selling these. So this is the Amiibo Festival special edition that came out on the Wii. Now these things I think at a point last year again we're in the Argos sale for about five quid. I'll put that out there because it makes my life easier. And um, I think that Argos was selling off for about £5 each. Um, I think even Amazon was selling them off quite cheap. I think like, you know, seven quid, eight quid, not too long ago. And this guy put it up on his um, on the Facebook marketplace. He said, these are for sale, £3 each, loads available. And because I kind of wanted one, I mean, they're quite a nice decorative little piece. I mean, like, it's it's quite a pretty box to kind of show you it. Do not mind a bit of Animal Crossing at all. I thought, yeah, I'll check it out. I'll go and see what he's got. So I messaged him and said, like, um, what's the condition of these? He's like, oh, they're brand new. And I was like, okay, um, can I take three then? Because I wanted to get one for myself, one for somebody else. And I thought, well... I'll get one for trade and I wasn't expecting like the trade to be a lot because actually CEX at the moment are trading these in for nine pounds at cash and 13 pounds credit so I was kind of like gobsmacked by that and I didn't realize until I got them home and um so I messaged I, I traded one in with some bits of CX and I messaged him the next day and said like have you got any more and he's like, yeah, I've, I've still got loads. I don't think anyone had messaged him about them. This, this is a strange thing. And I was kind of like, well, I don't know how he's got so many, why he's got so many. And I said, okay, I'll take another four. So I didn't haggle or anything. I paid him with 12 quid and picked up the items. And um, then I went into CEX and got some really nice bits with it. So I went into my local CEX and they had a couple of Saturn games left that I wanted because unfortunately because of lockdown there was there was loads in there before lockdown there's some really nice titles and i was hoping to to pick up more before lockdown happened i picked up a couple of titles which i showed in a previous video um i think it was cool spot or spot goes to hollywood and i think it was alien trilogy actually but i picked up those and i wanted to pick up some more but unfortunately everyone went mental over lockdown and bought everything so um, I went back and there was a couple of items still there and I kind of thought, yeah, do you know what? For the price of what they are, move that away, I have them for my collection. So for three quid, because it's in it's really nice condition overall to be fair, I picked up a copy of Olympic Soccer. And you ever think, why do you want Olympic Soccer? Well, to be honest, I haven't played any football games ever on the Saturn, so I wanted to see what it was like. And when I open it up, it's actually in really nice condition. It's got the manual and it was three quid. I mean, like, I couldn't leave it there. A satin game for three quid. So I picked that up to have in the, in the collection. I mean, it's even got this winner's edition sticker at the bottom. It doesn't come with anything extra for that. But it's a nice little kind of edition to have there. And I also picked up a copy of Duke Nukem 3D. Which, this, the actual guy behind the desk has asked to see him. Really had trouble opening this for... Anyone who wants to see how they open, really don't open very easily. You kind of really, I'm not going to be able to do it on camera now, am I? You kind of have to pop it open at one side and then kind of pull it open. But if you pull it from the middle, just the plastic kind of falls apart. And I said to him, like, do you want any help with this? And he was like, no, no, I've got it. I just don't want to break it. And I was like, 
All right. See him struggling for a couple of minutes. But yeah, disc is in there. The manual is in there. It is one of the hard cases. It's in really nice condition. And the manual's in really, really nice flat condition as well. I think this is the remainia, remainder of what was there before lockdown. There was a couple of other games I kind of had my eye on, which, again, were not by any means expensive games for the Saturn, but unfortunately they sold out. So, yeah, I picked up those items on that trip in, and effectively I think that was 18 quid. So that one Amiibo I got for, like, three quid has funded me, you know, best part of two games which is absolutely wicked and then on the way home from there um i popped in to see a friend of mine um because um i haven't seen for ages and ages and i just thought it'd be nice to catch up with a friend um, a mate who i haven't seen for for some time and he said he got something for me he sent me a message and um yeah he gave me a copy of pokemon blue which i can't get the light to show properly there we go put it straight as well which is wicked because I've never owned Pokemon Blue. I always had Pokemon Red as a kid. I never had Pokemon Blue. So now that means I've got the original three. I've got yellow, red, and blue. I've only got a case, uh, case box for red. And um, my yellow hasn't got a sticker. But I think you can still trade between the two of them. And it's just awesome to have these games because they're just going up in price. And they just hold you know, some great nostalgia for me. So yeah, anyway, I... Um, I got my four four amiibos and I've traded them in as well because I need to build up a little bit of trade credit for myself. So I went back to CEX or I went to another CEX because I was out and about and they had a Saturn game in stock. And so I thought, you know, con considering, you know, three quid an amiibo and I get eight, eight, uh, 13 quid back on it, effectively I'm picking these up for, you know, a fiver less. So the next game I picked up for the system was Jurassic Park The Lost World. Now, not in the most amazing condition. I'm sure you'll kind of see by the bottom there. It's kind of got a little bit of like probably water damage or something. And unfortunately, the spindles inside are knackered. But I can just about open it up. And um, yeah, I tested it out. I was a bit kind of humming and hiring on it because the disc has got, not that you'll see it there, a bit of a deep scratch on the outside. And they polished it up and it was still there. And I thought, well... Do you know what? I'll, I'll risk it because it's one of the ones I left behind from lockdown and I didn't have it. It is complete with manual. Yeah, so another Saturn one for the collection. And Saturn is one of the consoles that I wanted to collect this year. So um, I said, like, I got home and I thought, well, you know, I've, I've got rid of all these Amiibos, but I wonder if he's got any left. I wonder if anyone's bought any more. And I messaged him and I was like, do you have any more of these left? And he said, how many did he say he had left? I think he said, like, I've got 13 left. And um, I was like, oh, 13. I mean, what am I going to do with 13 of these Amiibos? Am I going to be able to take it in? I see it's going to just be like, you're the Amiibo guy. You're the guy who brings us, like, Amiibos all the freaking time. Like, how many of these things do you have? Or even refuse to take them. But I thought, do you know what? So that I'll ask him. I'll do an offer and I'll see if I can get the rest of them. So I said to him, like, you know, for, for the remaining 13, would you take 30 quid? And he said yes, which is friggin' fantastic. Because from, I mean, from 30 quid, 13 Amiibos, I mean, like, what's, what's 13 times 13? I mean, I don't know. It's, you know, about 160, 169 quid, I think, something like that. Absolute crazy, crazy like markup on that, and I really had some titles that I wanted to buy. So with that, I've got a little bit of credit now I can spend. But I treated myself to some games that otherwise I wouldn't be able to afford um, from CEX. So I've got a couple which I've got on order, and a couple which have already come through which i'm really happy with um the other game that i picked up i'll say at the same time as jurassic park which i've completely forgot to mention um which i do before that i got a copy of street fighter 2 on the snares because street fighter 2 is a game that i really wanted to go and play because back in the day i was absolutely rubbish at it so i didn't really give it any time and i remember people raving about it and me just not getting it and i thought you know what I'm going to give it a go. Really, really enjoy it. I'm absolutely rubbish at it, but 
with some perseverance, I managed to get up to Vega, and that's about as far as I've got because he is a bit of a idiot. Um, yeah. So yeah, I treated myself to a couple of games um, from CEX, so games that I wouldn't have normally been able to afford, and I'm really glad to say they came through in really nice condition. So the first one I'm going to show you is Panzer Dragoon Zwei, or two, because Panzer Dragoon means armored dragon. There you go. So yeah, German for two, and yeah, really, really nice condition on this one. It is complete. It is complete game, and it is complete manual, and it comes with one of these lovely little things, which I'll try and take out without wrecking it or just dropping the disc on the floor. Just about. So these little adverts of upcoming games, which is awesome. So like Turico, Dark Savior, Sonic 3D. Um, what was the other one on there? Scorcher, which I've never even heard of. Flip sides like Bug 2. So the sequel to Bug, Amok, King of Fighters 95, Manx TT, and what's that on the end there? Fighters Mega Mix. Absolutely awesome. I've, these are really, really cool, and I don't see them in Saturn games ever. I think because people take them out, which is a bit of a shame because it kind of adds to the appeal when you get these old games and it has in there. Now, the eagle eyes amongst you might have noticed there is a little bit of damage which you can kind of see. And I'm going to be a bit careful with this case. There's a little bit of a rip there. What someone's done is kind of torn down the outside right there and it's kind of torn around and in. But they've taped that up. And actually, I'm just going to leave that because if I try and fiddle around with it, try and take the tape off, it's just going to open it back up. They've done it really well. And yeah, I'm just going to make it worse if I start fiddling around. But yeah, Panzer Dragoon Zwei into the collection. And that was the last one C had it, CX had in stock. So really, really happy with that. The other game I've got, an absolute belter. I normally leave games like this till the end because, like, you know, I'm not going to do any better in a week. But actually, I've got such flipping good games this week that I can't leave it to the end and it doesn't ring true. So the other one I picked up was skies of arcadia guys on the dreamcast now it's even got this flipping sticker on the back and i've been looking at this for a while this is the one that got away last year there was a guy who was trading a load of stuff into cex at the counter and i went up this disc two i went up to him where his missus actually because he just had a pile of n64 stuff a pile of dreamcast stuff and i managed to like um get her attention and buy shenmue 2 off her but this is the one that like got away this is the one that was already kind of in the process of being traded so i couldn't really do that but yeah it comes with manual and it comes with this like great new games in 2001 2001 i mean like 20 years old nearly 19 years my maths is just about to it. We've got Fantasy Star, Confidential Mission, Virtua Tennis, uh, what else we got? Sonic Adventure 2, Daytona, um, Fighting Vipers, I didn't even know that came out on the Dreamcast. Crazy Taxi, 18 Wheeler, Outrigger, and Headhunter, which I do remember. And yeah, didn't really like that one particularly. But yeah, this has come. I bought just a box copy box copy from CEX and I don't know what they've downgraded it on to to take it from being mint I mean like if you know there's a fingerprint on the manual or like you know a tiny little mark I mean like there's a tiny little mark there of just when it's been in the box but absolutely nothing I don't know how they've graded this at anything other than mint because it is absolutely beautiful and yeah so so happy to have this in the collection it's a game i didn't think i would own looking at it at the start of the summer i was thinking it's not going to happen it's never going to happen but finally got it in the collection and yeah them 13 amiibos i've got to thank for some of this so absolute like trade up masterpiece on this so yeah since then i've also been well actually i'll do these next so well, I'll do this one first. So I traded in some more stuff and I picked up a Wii game from the CEX, which I hadn't seen before. So I picked up a copy of Bleach, which is a fighting game. And I've never seen the cartoon and I've still got the receipt in it. So I'll just take that out. 
but it is complete game and manual and only two pound fifty a sega game to boot so I'm not going to pass that up i don't think i'll ever see it again i've never seen it before so happy to put that on my shelf of unusual wii games and if you come across that let me know and the other unusual thing the other really really cool thing that i had um is as you probably know if you've watched previous videos I've been saying this year that I really wanted to pick up some of the unusual Wii games, some of the sought-after Wii games, the harder ones to get for the collection. And I think majority-wise now, I think I've got what I need or what I want, certainly. But these couple of games have eluded me. And I had to go I had to go international for them, guys. I had to go abroad. So I had to go all the way to Germany, the land of Panzer Dragoons. And, um, yeah... So the game in question, or the first of the games in question, because there's two of them, is the King of Fighters Arichi Saga, which is King of Fighters 94-298, which you'll see on the back. Yeah, and as I've already said, this is the German version. Um, the game is in the system because I've been playing it. Trust me, I have got it. Um, but yeah, the unfortunate thing with it being the German version is the manual is in German. But I picked this game up, I think, for about 25 quid plus postage. And if I were to buy the French version, it goes for at least double that. I mean, I've seen it go for like 40 quid plus postage. More recent ones I've seen go for about 90 quid or at least listed for that price. So it's really, really hard to come by and I've never seen a PAL one. So yeah, King of Fighters Arichi collection. Is that right? Orochi even, the Ricci, that Christina Ricci sister, who knows, and yeah, the other the other game I picked up, considering we're going down that kind of Neo Geo route, I might as well finish the collection of them, with this bad boy, well, not quite finished the collection, but Samurai Showdown, lads, Samurai Showdown, and this is Samurai Showdown 1, 2, 3, and Maku's Revenge, Samurai Showdown 5, and Samurai Showdown 6, so six games in one for the Wii there. Yep, really happy. All nice and complete in there. Disc manual in really nice condition, except the fact it's in German, but beggars can't be choosers in that. Um, yeah, really, really, really happy to have this one for like that. And um, I've really wanted to play some fighting games with King of Fighters and um, the Samurai Showdown. And um, people will probably be saying, why do you get the Wii ones? You can get the Xbox One versions. You can get it on the PSP. Because I want it on the Wii, guys. Like, I really like want to play some of these games on the Wii. These are hard games to get for the Wii. And I wanted to get some rarer ones for my collection. So I've got these two bad boys. And I think they came for about i think a total of about 50 quid maybe even a little bit less than that so you know by rights not expensive at all and they play completely in english so yeah very very happy to have both of those and yeah nice and complete the only downside being the gem ones the french don't have is you have this bloody great sticker on the front there saying 12 although that this one isn't a sticker that one's actually on the thing this one is a sticker over a sticker just to complete the whole Inception sticker going on. So yeah, that brings me up to this weekend's car boot sales. So that's everything that I got before and a pretty awesome video's worth of stuff. There's not many times I crack open as many good things as that. And I've got some more kind of coming on the way, guys. I've got some awesome stuff. But I went to the boot sale this weekend. Again, wasn't really knowing what to expect. But it didn't do too badly. It was even busier than last week. It was when I said about the single rows like system just taking over like double the amount of field. Well, this time I got there at half seven, still had the queue to get in, so didn't get into about quarter to eight, um, eight o'clock. By the time I left, because they were still doing the single row stalls, they'd gone all the way across the field, kind of moved all the way out kind of into the car park almost and we're all setting up there it was horrendously busy and the amount of people who were like buyers trying to come into the field were just giving up waiting to come in and just binning it up on the curb on the road so you know i'm pretty sure something will happen soon that they're going to kind of try and change that because they just can't regulate it i mean it's 
in essence, it's a really nice idea, the social distancing thing at car boot sales and taking gloves and masks, but people aren't doing it. They're saying, like, you know, ask people to show you their items. People aren't doing that. If you want to look at something, somebody's serving somebody else, they've got five people around them asking them what this costs, what that costs. They're not going to have time to, like, open something up for you and show it out like you would otherwise. It's just not going to happen. Um, so, yeah, it's just kind of going back to, to how it is, um, rightly or wrongly. That's just the way it is at car boot sales now. But i got an absolute stonking amount of stuff, and I'm really glad that I got up and went. Um so what what we show you first i mean what have i got i'll show you the kind of like naffy bits well i'll show you the first bits i've got actually because they're going to fall out on me so i took an absolute punt here an absolute punt um now i see eddie, eddie last year pick up some of these and they are skylanders just below the screen and he picks them up and he got some good credit on them and I saw somebody selling them for like 50p each and what drew my attention to it was this one which isn't a Skylander there's a Disney Infinity one Jack Skellington and I knew this had a bit of money in because everything Nightmare for Christmas does and this goes for about eight quid so I picked that up and I asked like how much they are and they said 50p each I thought well I'll have a look and um, I kind of had a look on CEX to see what the price would be I also picked up this one I thought Mickey Mouse would be worth a bit of money in Saucer's Apprentice outfit, um, which it isn't. It's worth, well, it's worth almost double what I paid for it. But I also picked up some um, of these Skylanders. So I picked up these guys because I looked at CX's website and I thought these are the ones that might be worth a little bit of money. But what I didn't realise until I asked Eddie on them is they're worth a bit of money if they have a gold base rather than the boring old black base. So a bit of a boob there, a bit of a mistake, which, um, yeah, which wasn't great. So I picked up, like, there is another one somewhere, but I don't know where it is. I picked up all of them, and um, for the whole lot, I got six, and it cost me three quid. So to be honest, when I checked, Jack Skellington, I think, goes for about eight or five or something like that. So I haven't missed out too badly on that, but beware the Skylanders is is the tip I will give you in relation to that. I'm still going to take the CX to see what i got for them. I also picked up some PC games, but not very much. I paid 50p each. I got a copy of The Sims 2. I might as well get the filler out of the way. Uh, Sims 3 Pets and The Sims 2, the DVD edition, which all go for, I think, two quid each. So pound fifty into six quid. Happy days. What does the DVD edition include? Extra features, interview hints and strategies, movie making tips, outtakes, rare ads. Yeah, <laughs> really not that much. It'll take too much interest to me. But yeah, little bit of little bit of trade credit in that. Um, I also picked up. I know someone like Griffo is a massive fan of this and he'll probably be well chuffed with this. I picked up a copy of Baldur's Gate Two in a nice cardboard case. They're not the big box version, although I don't even know if they did a big box version, but PC format winner 2001. It comes with this hulking great manual, which is trying to fall out on its own. It comes with a quick reference guide, and it comes with a poster. Yes, a bit of poster. Oh, another bit of posters. Didn't realise the poster was in there. And um, yeah, it comes with a shed load of discs. So. How many are there? Four, I think. I'm going to pull them all out individually. There you go. Four discs, which again, I think cost me 50p. So happy days with that. I do like some of the PC games. And I know Baldur's Gate is supposed to be one of the good ones, but I've never actually played it. So I now pick it up and play it in my own time. And then I was wandering along and I saw a bit of an unusual, unusual system. Well, I say system is an unusual game. I saw this like sitting unassumingly on a table. If you can see that, so it says The Hobbit, and I looked at it and I thought this looks like it's a cutout from a magazine that's been glued on. In fact, I was pretty sure it was a cutout from a magazine that's been glued on, but I can't take it on. Well, I can lift it up slightly at the edge, so you can see that it has. So I was like, that's a bit unusual. I look inside see what it's all about 
And if I can get this stuff out, it's got this booklet in there. So Melbourne House Software BBC Model B. So uh, that is cool. That is a bit of history. Like I've never seen this before. And just the kind of artwork on that sold it to me. I mean, the Smaug, Smaug the dragon looks awesome in there. And yeah, it's got the tape in there. The tape looks brand new. Had a look at it. Asked the guy how much he wanted for it. He wanted the quid. He wouldn't go any less. I decided I'd, I'd do it. So I picked it up. So I have that in the collection. I still haven't got a BBC Micro back, unfortunately. One day I will get one again. One day one will turn up at a boot sale and I'll have it for my collection. But until then, he will sit nicely on my shelf as a kind of nice little place placekeeper, like a little bit of nice artwork. I don't know. I don't know. But for the time being, he's going to stay there. And then the last thing, the last thing I picked up, because people have asked me about this, because I, I collect these and, and saying like, have you seen these go up in price at boot sales? And I was thinking, well, I haven't really seen them. Like, I've seen a couple, but haven't really picked them up. So I'll show you what, it is. what I saw was that poking out of a box. So did the old ninja shuffle over there, see what it was. And right behind it was this. And so I asked the guy like how much do you want for it? Show you, it's that complete in there, and he's like, "Oh, I'm selling it all together um, with the Wii." And sure enough, there was a Wii inside as well. Not only a Wii, he had Mario and Sonic at Olympic Games, which has got some food stuck to it without a manual, unfortunately. But yeah, that's in there, and came with nice white Wii. So the original one that's got the GameCube. Here's my flips. I, t I tested it when I got it home. It does work, which is awesome. Come with all the cables, two nunchucks. There's another one. I didn't see this at the time either, but on the remote, you can see that? That little bit under there, if you can't see it, it says Wii Motion Plus inside. So it's a Motion Plus remote as well and not only that one but it came with a red one as well so a nice nice little amount of like trading that so i said to him like how much does he want for it and he wanted i think 20 quid for it i offered him 15 and i picked it up for 18 so for those people who've kind of asked are we still like high prices of the car boot sale the answer is that is they can be but you can still get lucky if sellers don't know what they've got and if they're still pricing it on the I just have a Wii and I want to get rid of it. So yeah, all the cables, all the like power, aerial sensor bar, everything in there, 18 quid. So not a bad little amount of pickups by any means like from the boot sales. The boot sales are really kind of coming back into their own, which is great because for me, like the majority of my collecting is actually done throughout the summer. It's been a bit kind of hit and miss with the summer and things like that. So really, really happy to have these bits. And yeah, got some awesome, awesome stuff from CX and I've still got some bits in the post um, to come, which I'll show you because every now and then if you have a little bit of credit, it is nice to treat yourself. But yeah, that is it guys. I hope you've enjoyed. I've rambled on long enough now as it is. But thank you very much for watching and thank you very much to um, Pete and to Dana for the bits you sent me and cheers guys for watching. I'll see you all in the next one with some more pickups. And bye-bye for now.